Hi, Susan Leahy here from RobertsRulesMadeSimple.com, coming to you with another episode of Robert's Rules Revealed. Today, we're going to talk about cleaning up messy meetings with Mr. Parliamentarian himself, Jim Stewart. Now before you leave, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of Robert's Rules Revealed. All right, so excited to be here today with Mr. Parliamentarian. Jim, how are you doing? Good, Susan. How are things with you? I'm doing very, very great because we're going to be answering a question I hear a lot. It is, who is Robert and why are we following his rules anyway? So, <laughs> Jim, I think you're the perfect man to answer this question. Let's talk about, well, who is Robert anyway? Uh, Henry Martin Robert was an officer in the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, he retired as a general, as most of them do, and, and he wrote this in the, in the late 1800s um, because he was elected president of an organization and had trouble conducting the meeting. So, and he looked at the existing material that was out there. It wasn't sufficient, so he wrote his own set of rules. I mean, wouldn't you know it, an engineer is the one who wrote the rules. Right. And then <laughs> that was in, in the late 1800s. So this has now been in use for almost 130 years. Wow, and I think it's on its 11th, 11th edition, correct? The 11th edition came out roughly this time last year. That's great, that's great. So now we know who's Roberts, and I think the bigger question is, well, why are we using, if I'm in an organization, how, how did his rules, Roberts' Rules of Order, come to be something that I have to know something about? Well, th there's, there's a number of, of, of authorities that tell you how you have to operate. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, the, the, the Constitution is over everybody, but that doesn't apply to groups, groups directly. However, there mm -hmm. are IRS rules about how your nonprofit status is, and there's a to-do list and a don't-do list under that. You have yeah, the yeah, Corporations yeah. Code of whatever state you're incorporated in, which mm -hmm. will usually set minimums and default positions for things which have to be in your bylaws or that you have to do. Um, yeah. Then you have maybe a charter from a parent organization. Um, uh -huh. Then you have your your own bylaws, which are uh -huh. the structure of your your organization and your governance. Th think of the bylaws as the the frame and the outside walls of your house, and mm -hmm. that gives mm -hmm. you those kind of limits and the basic structure. And then That's all of the other rules and policies and everything you create are what you do inside. But the yeah, but yeah, the yeah. bylaws are the structure. Then you have your parliamentary authority which is hmm. how do you conduct the meetings and, and how do you conduct the business portion of this. So really, inside my bylaws, that's where it dictates that we are going to use Robert's Rules of Order? It should be, it should okay. be in your bylaws, um, mm -hmm. and, and it should say we're going to use the current edition of Robert's Rules of Order newly revised. Right. Right. And you know what's interesting is I have a lot of people who are seeking information from me and have questions, legal questions, and, uh, and, and they'll, they'll treat uh, Roberts as if it's a legal uh, entity. What do you say about that? Um, it has the same force and effect as the bylaws because when you say we're going to use Roberts uh, as our authority, you are mm -hmm. what they're calling incorporating it by reference. So it has yeah. the same effect as your bylaws. The yeah. bylaws are a, a quasi-legal document, and I've got to put the disclaimer, I'm not an attorney, this is yeah, not legal right, advice. Right, right, right. <laughs> there you go, good. <laughs> are, are a quasi-legal <laughs> document that yeah. is enforceable by a court if somebody sues over something that you did or didn't do according mm -hmm. to the bylaws. Mm -hmm. But they're mm -hmm. not a legal document in that they're a law that somebody's going to come out and you know, put you in jail if you yeah. violate. That's right. That's right. Now, and I think that's an important distinction because some people really don't get that. They kind of think that Roberts' Rules of Order is the law. I mean, and really what Roberts is, is it's the guideline, the parliamentary authority of how we're going to actually conduct business. And that's what's been integrated into our bylaws, saying, okay, we're going to use this, right? And, and, and so many times the questions I get asked are, how do we do such and such? And I, my answer has to be, well, this is according to Roberts, but your bylaws might say something different. That's right. Your bylaws over. Very important to know that. Very important to know that. So yeah, if I want, if you really want a good answer, I'm going to have to read your bylaws too. That's right, right. Because they work together. You know, it's not that you know Roberts isn't a standalone book. It's a standalone book that's supported by the organization's bylaws and constitution. Or maybe we'll go the other way. Roberts supports the organization's bylaws and constitution. So now. 
Mr. Parliamentarian, thank you for your time and your energy as you kind of shed some light on this very important, uh, this very important question. You know, who's Robert and why do we follow his laws anyway? So thanks for your time, Jim.